Let's break down how much I made from my sync cues in the month of May. And you're going to want to stick around because I'm going to show you the breakdown of the track that got me the most placements. It's a great day to be alive. Now, I'm making this video to show you some realistic figures of how much you can make month to month or every other month from sync licensing. Now, I am a part of ASCAP, the PRO or Performance Rights Organization with ASCAP. Depending if you're a writer or publisher, you may get domestic royalties and then international royalties, and they might vary which month you get them. So in May, I got my international royalties. Now, let's take a look. If you look right here at the bottom right, I made about $245. So that's not bad for some music that I made a long time ago, and I'll tell you about that later on. If we look at this breakdown right here, it shows you where most of your money came from. And in my case, it mostly came from TV with about $185 and in the second place, other royalties, which I don't know what that means, but that probably means different downloads, different things that play whatever they consider other royalties. You see here, this is the various different countries that they collect royalties. Now, if you look at Canada, I'm actually, I live in Canada, so they're considered international royalties, but I used to live in the States for most of my life, so that's why I signed up for ASCAP first. I may switch in the future because I get double tax. So living in Canada, I have to still file my U.S. taxes. So I get taxed in Canada, and because I make from money from the United States with ASCAP, I get taxed on that money too. So I probably would try to switch in the future to SOCAN because SOCAN will collect my royalties anyway from the United States. And so I might avoid some taxes. But here are all the countries that consider international where I collect my money from. And if we stop right here and look at this performance period, and this is just for Australia, look at the timeline. July 2022 to September 2022. So this is when all this music is getting collected. So you see, that takes a long time to roll out. Now, that might be different if you're with CSAC, BMI, or different organizations, but this is just how ASCAP collects it. So I'm getting money almost a total year ago that's still going. But that's why I love sync licensing. You can still collect money. So right now, I'm probably collecting money for TV shows. And if you look for Australia, one of my top performing songs is this Dark Trips that played on the Catfish and this Another Hitting another hidden trap that played on Catfish and Will. I'll break down later and show you how much of just one song can pay off for you in the long run. So it's just the same thing. They just break down different countries here again. See Dark Trips, a lot on Catfish. That's a pretty popular placement for me. You got the Bahamas, if I keep going, Belgium. So it just breaks it down one by one. So I'm not going to break down each one one by one. But if we do look at here... Look for Belgium, the performance period, May 2022 to August 31st, 2022. So again, you see the variance of when they actually collect the royalties. Now, I'm going to break down three of my most popular songs for this track. Now, overall, Dark Trips. Now, if you look at the cue sheet, it says 17 episodes this one cue is on for Catfish. So that's a lot of episodes for this one song to be collecting royalties on. If we go to the next one, another hidden trap. So that was another popular one. You can see, so it's, a, it's in six shows with a total of eight different cues. So that's a lot of places that this song can travel. And that's why I really love the power of sync licensing. And the last one it's Player Living Large. This is a big one. You can see all the series that it's been on, the different shows, and for a total of 36. If you look at the last one, Million Dollar Listing LA has the most um, cues in it with, at 12. So you could just see how much this stuff spreads, man. And this stuff, if it gets syndicated, if it's new streaming platforms that come out, that these shows can replay on. You just don't know. And 
I checked too when I actually made these songs. So all three of these songs, Dark Trips, Another Hidden Trap, and Player Living Large, I made these beats in 2017, right? 2017. So even though $245 doesn't sound like a lot to make for a month, it's definitely not going to pay all your bills, but I made these tracks in 2017. This is just three of my tracks that are popular. So the compound interest on tracks is high. That's why I love the sync licensing game. If you're not in the sync licensing game, I advise you to get into it because I know I only wanted to produce for artists when I first started. And nothing's wrong with just producing for art, producing for artists, but it just hit me one day that TV shows need music. And the beauty of it, I can just make a lot of music and TV shows need a lot of different types of music so you get more chances to take your shot right one of the, one of these reality shows might have a hundred cues in one episode even though you have to fight for the opportunity to get to the place where someone hears your music you still take a lot of shots now i'm gonna break down the track player living large since i have a lot of placements for this last royalty plane payment. I'm going to show you what makes this a good sync track, the way it's structured and everything like that so you know how to make your music for TV. So here we have the track Player Living Large. And it's pretty simple if you look at it. Combined, we got 12 tracks. So it's pretty simple. So that's probably one reason why they picked the track so many times. Let's take a listen to it. So nice and simple. So that's one of the reasons why I think they use it. And it's a pretty smooth track. Now let's listen to how the track builds. Oh, intrigue. Mmm, scandal. Tension. See, we building the intro. Simple. So as you can see, it built up simple, but what I think really makes the track, if we listen to just the strings, right there, that's tension, that's drama. You could almost just play those strings. The reverb, it adds that space. See, as I talk, I can talk perfectly over the track. It's so simple. But it adds drama. Now let's add some other elements. You see how that, how it moves? So it definitely can move a track with just simple elements. Now let's add the bass. Now, you see how simple that was? I was talking over. Did you get in a different mood? Did you feel yourself feeling like you were anxious and that tension? Right? This why this track has been played on other, like, so many shows, especially Love and Hip Hop, off the top of my head, that this track got picked for because it's simple, it adds tension, and it has movement. So that's another reason why I think this track gets picked a lot because the way those strings hit on that downbeat, that doom, 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 that that strings orchestral stuff just adds automatic tension. I don't know why it does. It just adds automatic tension. And the third thing that I think makes this track stand out is the sting ending. Now, most tracks, or I should say all your tracks should have sting endings, but this one is a unique sting ending of how it ends. Let's play it. Now, 
Now, you see how that ended? It even added a little different caveat on the end. And like, huh? Right? At the end of a scene, and it tails out with the reverb. Now, sometimes when they pick song for these shows, they want the ending to end abruptly. So you wouldn't want to have a reverb tail or you wouldn't want to fade out the track. If they need to fade out, they'll fade out the track on their end. But so it just depends on the brief, what the brief says. The brief might say hard out. And that just means stop, no reverb, nothing extra. This one, I left the tail on. So obviously when they chose it, they thought it was a good sting ending. It's just all preference. Some people would tell you if they like the tail on the end, some won't. So you just got to figure it out. Just stick with your style um, and it might get picked up. So all those things combined, I really think what makes this track stand out. And if you listen to it, it's not, it's not as they say, a banger, right? It's not nothing that's going to top the charts, but it doesn't need to because the music in these shows aren't the star, right? It's a different when you produce them for artists because the artist is the star, but the beat helps it more. It's like first and secondary where the music in reality shows is secondary, but it's actually way, 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 way in the background. It's not secondary, but if they didn't have it, you would know that something is missing. But the most important thing is to hear the person and how they're talking, right? The music is there just to keep the rhythm going, to add a little bit of action, and it can set the mood for a scene. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do you want to get into sync licensing? Are you a vet? Are you a rookie? Let me know, man. This sync licensing game can open up a whole realm of possibilities for your income and it can help you stay creative because you can just produce a lot of music and have a lot of chances to get your stuff heard on TV. If you still need some more help, check out these videos. <laughs>